So I got a question from one of my audience members. They want to build a gaming PC. They gave me a few parameters and I think it will give a very interesting, you know, walkthrough as to creating a better understanding on what a gaming device in terms of the PC side looks like. So this person, shout out to you. Uh, they said, okay, VG, I have $1,000 to build my PC and I like to be able to game at 4K 60 FPS. I would like to be able to upgrade the PC and make it future proof. I would like for it to rival or leave the PS5 Pro and leave it in the dust. What do I get? Please help a fan. Well, I'm flattered. Thank you so much for trusting <laughs> that I'll be able to help provide some valuable insight. And I, the first thing I want to say is, Everybody builds their gaming PCs differently and everybody has their own opinions. So some of you are PC builders and the you know audience as well. And so you're going to have your ideas as well. And I would like for you all to chime in when all of this is said and done. So the very first thing I want to go ahead and kind of, you know, in a sense, clarify is number one, you don't want to build a PC to rival a console simply because, and there's no offense to anyone, when you build a PC, that PC is already better than a console because there are advantages that it has that the console doesn't have. So perhaps maybe you want to build a PC that will probably game at the same level of a PS5 Pro. That's probably what you're trying to convey, but you don't want to actually rival it because in reality, you can't rival it. You already beat it by sheer capability of what the PC can do. And I'll show you guys this from another comment an audience member of mine wrote. They said, soon as somebody says that a console is as powerful as a PC, the conversation is done at that point because the person is limiting the versatility and flexibility of PC just to gaming, which is not even a sizable fraction of what a PC's power is measured by. And I made a video just recently actually obliterating all the talk from these content creators saying that the 4070 was a match with the PS5, which is not true. Because a 4070 has applications that span far and wide and the CPUs have far and wide applications as well that the console can't get to. It doesn't even talk in that category, if you get what I mean. So this is exactly why I'm saying that. So in reality, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a fair comparison, to be honest, because it's two versus one. The console's got an APU where they basically blended the functionality of the APU, the CPU and GPU together, whereas the PC has got dedicated CPU and dedicated GPU. And so in some instances, it will, you know, basically leverage both of them if a game is using both very well, and it will outshine a console in exactly what it's designed to do. So some builds can do 1080 way better than a PS5 Pro, even though when they get to like 1440 and 4K, they'll probably maybe seem to match but just because dedicatedly they're able to render specific aspects of the game, they already win just by default. So that's the first thing that I wanted to ensure that we clarify with this audience member's request. Now, 4K 60 FPS, that is a very fun one because again, the PlayStation 5 Pro and even the Series X have a limited number of games that they can play at 4K 60 FPS. If you want to game at 4K 60 FPS across the board, that's what's called no compromise gaming. That budget will look more like 26, 2700, and you will run games at 4K that even a console will not even dream of running at 60 FPS, even at 1440, even at 1080. And I have an example for all of you, in case you were wondering, what kind of game would a console not be able to run at 1440, you know, 60 FPS or even 1080, 60 FPS? Well, it's Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights is the one game that is an open world game. Game runs a lot of code in the background, a lot of enemy NPCs. It has a multiplayer, well, not a multiplayer, it has a co-op aspect of it that is very tasking to your games, you know, to your hardware's resources. And so, yes, if you want to do 4K 60 to, on a game like this, the RTX 4090 is going to take you there. But that's not within the budget that you're actually, you know, in a sense, uh, trying to target. Now, you can do 4K 60 FPS on, say, Batman Arkham City on this build that I'm actually, you know, going to put together for you with $1,000. So it's arbitrary. 4K 60 is just a huge, you know, net that you want to cast out wide. And I don't think it really is helpful in that comparison in this case. 
So what I would say is we're going to build you something with $1,000 that can hold you down in the 1440 category in a sense. And then you have upgraded paths within AM5. I've, I'm yet to build in AM5. I did buy a pre-built one time in AM5 with a 4090, but I returned it when they had 4090s in stock and just put my 4090 in my AM4 5950 build. So my experience with AM5 is a little light. So what I did was, for this audience member of mine, was I put together two builds on PC Part Picker. Build number one, which is this build over here, is an AM4 build that is $650. This is pretty much the same specs as my console killer build. And this is not future proof if you want future proof as one of your, you know, landmarks, but it does beat the PS5 and it rivals the PS5 Pro. How do I know? You can play Gotham Knights at 1440 native and hit 60 FPS. I have videos showing it where I just have a camera, my 1440p monitor. I showed the hardware inside of the case and it's playing Gotham Knights at 4K60. There's some dips here and there because the game is very tasking and pretty much any other game that I've actually run through it will play 1440, 60 for me for the most part, unless the game has optimization issues. <clears throat> Jedi Survivor, that crap, stupid, annoying, annoying, annoying performance that the thing puts out. Not insulting the developers. I'm just saying the performance is annoying. And I love the developers, which is weird. The combat designer who's now become a lead designer and, you know, even the creative director who left. I know their names. They don't know me, but I like their work. And so I, you know, no disrespect to them. It's just that I had to actually play the game on the Xbox to be able to beat it. And my PC copy is just sitting there. And I'm just complaining to you guys. Come on. Y'all did the first game and I played that game multiple times on PC. I don't know what happened on the second game, guys. Come on. You know, so. This build is going to get you, you know, the, get the job done. But you are requesting for a build that would actually give you a future proof. And I told you that this particular build is not future proof. But when you want to go future proof, there is a build that I actually did suggest for you. And that build I put on PC Part Picker as well. And we're going to go ahead in this video. We're going to explore that particular build itself. Because I strongly believe that this is going to help a lot of us to be able to see what the PC gaming side is like. Now, the other build is on AM5. This is where I think, you know, we can kind of start talking and seeing, okay, your future proof, you know, uh, desire, how does that actually look like? Well, if you want to future proof your, you know, your build, you want to build on a platform that is still expanding. So right now, what AMD has done is they've basically kind of stopped, not basically, they have stopped expanding the CPU lineups on AM4's platform. What they've started doing is expanding AM5 and AM5 has, you know, different little tiers that are in there, sub tiers. And then over down the road, they're going to keep releasing more and more CPUs, cannibalizing the ones that they've made. And this is why console can never keep up with any PC you build, because even if you were an AM4 and you decided that, oh, you want to move to AM5. Well, all you got to do is change your CPU, motherboard and RAM. You change these three items and now your PC is basically in the future. Right. But if you want to build where you can easily just maybe just do a drop in like your CPU, then this is where you're more than likely going to be. And I decided to go with the Ryzen 5 7600 simply because it is somewhat in line with the Ryzen 5 55, I'm sorry, 5600, which is one CPU tier higher than this AM4 build. Like if we go to the PC part picker and choose a CPU, let's say we want the Ryzen, uh, you know, Ryzen 5 5600. This CPU here is $114. I can add it to my PC part picker list, but, you know, it, it's a substitution for the build that I actually put together for you, which is this build over here. You can substitute it and you will definitely crush the PS5 Pro. The reason I said it will, it will kind of fight with the PS5 Pro is because of the CPU. But once you, cl you know, once you climb that CPU ceiling, it's definitely going to be doing raw raster that the PS5 Pro is going to struggle with and say raw 1440, 60 frames per second, you know, almost any game, as long as the game is doing fine and it's not needing, say, mesh shaders or some gimmicks. That's where I think it's going to do that. And I'm a little confident in that. Now, yes, in some applications, the PlayStation 5 Pro, maybe some games that have been specifically tuned for the PS5 Pro will more than likely show more FPS. But again, you shouldn't be worried about that because, again, like I said, you have a better device that has bigger applications. And when they run a full 20, 30 game test, on average, you're going to see that the PlayStation 5 Pro will probably just fall flat because you can't get some resolutions 
uh, activated on the PS5 Pro. Many developers will scale the game down a lower resolution to then upscale, render, and then try to give you FPS based on that standard, which it doesn't really give you a good way to give a snapshot between both of them. But back to the AM5 build that I put together, which actually showcases that now you are on this platform, it's a little bit more expensive than the $1,000. I know you have, you have $1,127 here, and that is because right now AM5 is, on, it is you know, the hot kid on the block. This is why I'm not on AM5, because if I enter AM5, I want to enter AM5 at the top. I don't want to enter AM5 on the entry level. Nope, I'm no longer bothered about doing that. And so everyone has different needs. So if you want to enter AM5 and be future-proof now, then sure, just you will eat a $127 fee just to get into AM5. Ideally, you're, yes, you will get better performance, slightly better performance in some applications. You will get good power, you know, conservation and management in the CPU side. But at the end of the day, like I said, it all depends on you. And we can optimize a little bit more within these categories that we see here. One area that we can optimize is by saying, okay, since you want to go into this category, why don't we say instead of getting a two terabyte NVMe, why not get a one terabyte NVMe at this point in time so that you can save good money? If you look very carefully, the NVMe for the one terabyte is $55 compared to 112. And so if we go ahead and we add that to this particular build, and we say, okay, well, what in the world is going, let me go ahead and change this real quick because VC Part Picker is weird. Uh, I have to, oh, okay, okay, I'm using the list on another device. Let's say I want to edit the build. Let's edit this part list. There we go. That's how you do that. And we go ahead and we say, let's go ahead and change and add like additional storage. Let's add a one terabyte for $55. And then we're going to delete this two terabyte. Now we've saved us a good chunk and now we're at $1,070. So this is where optimization starts to take precedence, right? We now have a case where we have some flexibility as well. The MSI Mag Forge is one case that you could use, but there are other cases that cost about $30. They cost about 40 bucks. We can save $10 on that case. And again, this is another idea that you can go with. So we can remove this case and then we can come in and look and say, okay, what cases are going to be compatible? And now we can start looking at our budget and saying, okay, you know, where, where, are, the, where are the cases? Uh, price low to high. There we go. There are some for 40 bucks, $42, and then we can start taking a look at uh, DIY PC is, in my opinion, one of my favorite case makers. I have a DIY PC case that's about seven years old. In fact, the computer that I'm making this video on, that's the sound of a DIY PC case that they discontinued years ago. They don't sell this kind of case anymore. And their cases, I do like them. They come with some really cool stuff. So you can spend $40 on a case, you know, whatever. Let's just go with this one. That's $43. It is a mid ATX, you know, tower case. You should be able to get your build in it. Uh, it's a little interesting to build because it just carry like a little bit of a, you know, aspect to it. But then PC part picker is supposed to give us like, say, any notifications, say if our case is having some issues or might have an issue, we'll be able to know. So now we've now optimized. We're sitting at $1,062. Notice that there's an item here that requires shipping. So this case might not even be worth our time. But again, like I said, you can optimize. Then Black Friday is coming soon. GPUs are going to start getting slight discounts here and there. It gives you another opportunity to optimize as well. If you want to basically lock into this $1,000 price point or as close to it as possible, it gives you another opportunity. But again, you are now, like I said, in a future platform. Your GPU is plug and play. It's basically drop in, connect cables, and bam, you now are on a new GPU platform if you want. So this $469 GPU here for a 7800 XT is not the only option to play at 1440. There are options that can actually get you 1440 for about $300, but it would depend on what it is that you want. I would say the 6800 XT, which is a little older, yes, I have that GPU. In fact, it's inside this case that I'm actually making this video in. It will give you 120 FPS at 4K in Gotham Knights. Here, I have the footage for you guys here. I mean, let me see. Did I change the footage? I think I was recording here. Hold on. I got to find it for you guys because now that I've said it, you're going to be wondering, where's that 120 FPS footage? Calm down, folks. I think I may have it right about here. Yeah, well, There we go. So notice I'm recording at the same time. There we go. Look at the footage on the top right, the FPS on the top right corner. I got 103 to 100 and 
you know, 8, 120, depending on the situation that I'm in. I'm even getting as high as, well, in the map, the FPS goes crazy because that's almost a static image. But I'm getting about 120. In some cases, I'm getting 150 FPS. 1440 native, no gimmicks, no upscaling in any way. And that's raw rasterization from the 6800 XT, which is like the old version of the 7800 XT. But it costs me about twenty, forty dollars, uh, you know, less. If you notice here, if I can find the sixty eight hundred XT, uh, there were some here just now when I was looking. I can't find any anymore. Oh my gosh, it's already, it's all gone. <laughs> People are buying them. That I mean, yeah, you got to move really fast, folks, because at the end of the day, like these things are gonna disappear. Well, it's already gone. I can also recommend the sixty seven fifty XT. That one is still in the market. It is, in my opinion, I, I, I own it, and so I can recommend it. You can get it for two hundred and ninety nine dollars. Mm, I can't argue with that because it is about two tiers lower. Uh, let me remove the 67. Uh, let me remove the 7800 XT. It is, you know, two to three tiers lower uh, percentage differences. We'd have to look. And that build already basically shoots down under $1,000. Now, the one thing that I will say with the 6750 XT is you will have a bottleneck here for sure because the 7600 is a good GPU. But the bottleneck does not seem like it's going to be too bad. We can use a bottleneck calcu calculator just to kind of see. So we can say 7600. Let me go ahead and go ahead and put the put this back on here, so you guys can see. We can say a 7600, um, um, 6750 XT bottleneck. Let's see what a bottleneck calculator will do and show us what might be going on. And these are not necessarily, uh, they're not necessarily the best, but they do give you kind of a good, you know picture and I, as my suspicions were there is a bottleneck the bottleneck says an amd ryzen 7600 is too weak for the am the you know rx 6750 xt in in 1080 applications so again you're now in am5 but this is the price that you have to pay with a comparison like this now there are other possibilities that you can go with you can go with like the 60 uh, you can go with like say a better amd ryzen 5 cpu but Again, like I said, it's a premium you're paying to go into AM5. So again, this is how you're going to basically make your build. When you're doing your first build, your build will probably be lopsided. And when I say lopsided is, if you're especially when you're on a budget, one is going to be stronger than the other. Your CPU or your GPU, one of them is going to lob in one way or the other. I would recommend right now that because we have this extra room in terms of, say, the price point, you know, right now we're sitting at an extra $100 that we now probably can go in and now get ourselves another CPU in AM5. So choose CPU. We're not going to go with the 7700X 3D. No, we might now go with the 7700X, which is now a better CPU, and then brings us closer to the $1,000 mark. If, say, we could find a 6800 at the same price that it used to be before people started to buy it like crazy after they talked about the PS5 Pro, it used to be like $350. I mean, it, all of a sudden, everybody now wants one, and so everyone's lost their minds, and so you can't find one anymore. Everybody's like, wanting, oh, here, we want $700 for this stuff. It's now become somewhat skewed in the pricing, but again, you can see exactly what it is that I mean. There will have to be some searching going on, but you have at least a $450 to $500 block that's still left for your GPU, you know, your GPU after you basically moved in. So let's go back to that calculator. Let's look at the 7700X uh, with the um, 6750 and XD. So let's see what both of them are going to do in this case. I suspect we still will have a bottleneck and yep. It says that it's too weak for the 6750 XT in 1080 <laughs> applications. That's why I said this is not as accurate as you could get it. It gives you kind of a picture but again, you're not going crazy. You're entering from that level and you will get 1440 applications out of it. I mean, I got 1440 out of a Ryzen 5 5500 and that did a good job. I can't see how the Ryzen 7 7700 is not going to give you very good performance. So here we are sitting on this particular paradigm. Another option that you have, and this is where PC gaming goes crazy, guys. I mean, we're 20 minutes and I'm still here. Another possibility that you have is going to the NVIDIA side. But NVIDIA, you have to also realize that with less VRAM, you're going to be in a very interesting place. So a 4060 will work for you here, but you're going to be without a lot of VRAM. So keep that in mind. 
You will have access to things like frame generation because you're in the 40 series. You will have access to DLSS. That's also another option, but I usually don't worry about that, but some people may want to worry about that. And so these are some of the options that you have if you decide that you want to go the PC gaming route with the $1,000 budget as your limit. There are many other considerations that we could talk about, but I thought, okay, let me go ahead and break this down on a video, but I did send you a PC part picker list that would more than likely make things very simple for you. Those of you in the comment section who build PCs as well, holla, you know, and put your own ideas as to how they can optimize this $1,000 budget. If I had $1,000, it would be different as well from somebody who had $1,000 because I got a bunch of PC parts that are sitting around here. So I can make that, that $1,000 stretch like crazy. In their case, if this is their limit, then we'll need some creativity to be able to get out of, you know, whatever limits that we have in terms of, say, maybe bottlenecks or, you know, anything that you may see that could be a weakness in terms of the CPU and the GPU selection that I've made. All right. I got to go. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Talk to me in the comment section. Peace out.